What's up everyone, Alex here. A few months ago, I featured Chained Echoes in a video called 5 Upcoming Japanese Style RPGs, and with its release date recently announced, I figured I'd give you all some detailed info about it. This game is slated to release on PS4, Xbox One, Switch, and PC on December 8th. At first glance, Chained Echoes looks like it blends elements from Final Fantasy, Chrono Trigger, and Xenogears, but it also combines them with many conveniences of modern games, making it an incredible love letter to JRPGs. And you won't believe that this is all made by one person. This video is going to be diving deep into its combat and some of its progression systems, so this is going to be a very beefy video, and as always, there won't be any spoilers here. In Chained Echoes, battles are turn-based, with turn orders displayed on the top right corner. And you have both HP and TP, with the latter being the game's resource meter, both of which will replenish completely after each battle. One interesting thing about the game is that defeating enemies will show what loot you're about to get, but you won't actually receive it until the combat has finished. The game also makes mention that you'll receive materials that you can use to upgrade weapons, and clan points for various clan shop benefits. We won't be going over that because that's not available as of press time. And of course, this is all available after completing each battle. You'll also earn skill points that you can use to upgrade skills, but we'll go over that later. What's really cool is that each enemy also displays their weaknesses, which is a great quality of life feature. There are no random battles in Chained Echoes, and much like Chrono Trigger, you'll face off against your opponents on the field. Battles seem like they're quite snappy and seems to have a good game feel, and you can tell because as soon as commands are inputted in the gameplay, each character jumps right in and does the action right away, with actions that are also quick and snappy feeling. Unique to Chained Echoes is its overdrive system, and this is comprised of a bar that has three designated areas marked with different colors, which are yellow, green, and red in that order. There's also a white cursor that is displayed underneath, and every action moves this to the right. If you think of this cursor like a thermometer that controls the pace of combat, you pretty much get the idea of what's happening here. Essentially, the goal of this thermometer is that you want to stay in the green area as much as you can, because if you reach the red area at the very far right, you'll receive a lot more damage than normal. This mode is called overheating, and you don't want to be in it. Staying in the green activates overdrive, which sits between yellow and red, and right smack dab in the middle, you will actually increase the damage you deal, as well as receive only half the damage that you'd normally receive. And best of all, skills will only cost half the TP, which is just a great boon. To help you figure out how far your cursor will move, a gray arrow will show up, kind of like a preview each time you highlight an action, giving you a glimpse into the future. But what if you're already in the red? Fortunately, the game gives you several means to move the cursor back to the left. While in overdrive or overheat, an icon will pop up to the left of the bar. This icon represents a skill type, and each action has a corresponding skill type. If you use a skill that corresponds with this icon, this will move the cursor towards the left greatly. And for quality of life, any actions that match the current skill type will have its text highlighted in yellow. It's really cool. This icon will also have a countdown and will keep changing over time, so you really have to take advantage of it while it's up. There's other ways to move the cursor to the left, like switching out characters during combat, using defend, or using an ultra move. Just from the onset, the overdrive system seems to be designed so that you don't just spam the same commands over and over in combat, so you kind of have to juggle the temperature of battle a bit to really maximize the amount of damage you deal. It's in this sense that Chained Echoes encourages you to play aggressive, but not so aggressive that you're just spamming abilities over and over. What's also interesting about Chained Echoes is that you don't get experience points. Instead, you'll earn skill points to upgrade your skills, with each character having their own skill pool, meaning these points are not shared amongst party members. But here's the thing, you can't buy skills using these points. Instead, you'll be using grimoire shards to acquire new skills, 
designated by this star. And skills have different categories, such as action, meaning these are the abilities that you use during combat, passive skills, and specific stat boosts. Keep in mind that buying action and passive skills will still increase your stats as well, so buying stat boosts isn't the only way to increase them. You'll be receiving these grimoire shards after defeating bosses or finishing special tasks. And keep in mind that even though you can buy a whole bunch of actions and passives, you'll still have to equip them in order to use them. Gaining just one of these shards will allow all of your party members to make use of it, meaning that if you receive one grimoire shard, every character that you have will have one to use to buy new skills. And as I said before, skill points is what you're going to use to power up action and passive skills. Frankly, the lack of experience points in Chain Echoes doesn't really bother me a lot, as there have been a lot of JRPGs that kind of tried the system that is less reliant on the traditional experience point system and more about strategy. And by gating grimoire shards after very specific points in the story and your experience, the game still manages to kind of keep the challenge of each battle pretty close to where your party's composition is at that moment, while still allowing you to kind of power people up using the skill point system. And I actually can't wait to play around with this because I just want to see like how this all plays out in the full picture, because it is quite elegant when you think about it. And I think that's the name of the game, right? It's almost like Matthias asked, how can he contribute to the genre while still paying homage to some of his favorite classics? And I think Chained Echoes is poised to really deliver an experience that longtime JRPG fans will really truly appreciate. But enough of what I think, because I want to hear what you think. What do you think about Chain Echoes' new overdrive slash overheat system? Or how it tries to shake up how powering up your characters work by abandoning experience points in favor of SP and Grimoire shards? Post your thoughts in the comments below and let's talk about it. Chain Echoes comes out on December 8th on PS4, Xbox One, Switch, and PC. There is a physical version that will go on sale, but I don't think it will be available until summer 2023. Thank you very much for watching everyone, and I'll see you in the next video.